take your demons to church let's open our bible to luke chapter luke chapter 13 and verse 16. luke chapter 16 in fact i'm going to read verse 11. behold there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could not in no way raise herself up but when jesus saw her he called her to him and said to her woman you are loosed from your infirmity and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God and I'm going to read verse 15 then the Lord answered him and said hypocrite does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox and donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it so ought not this woman being the daughter of Abraham whom Satan has bound think of it for 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. I have four points. Point number one, being a daughter does not mean you can't have demons. It just means demons can't have you. Being a son, being a Christian does not mean that you cannot have demons. It just means demons cannot have you. As I mentioned, word possession scares so many people and Christians cannot be possessed by a demon. By a, but Christians can be in possession of a demon and the difference between possessed by and in possession of when you're possessed by something you are owned you become the property of the possessor but when you are in possession of you're the owner and you have it a Christian can have a demon in fact Christian can have whatever Christian wants to have for those people walking around say Christians cannot have demons, I'm going to tell you something. If Christians cannot have demons, then Christians cannot have flesh. Christians cannot have sickness. Christians cannot have anything. And Christians are simply robots who lost their free will the moment they prayed a sinner's prayer, which is not true. When you open your life to the enemy, something will happen. The enemy will come in right now we live in a time where it's extremely hot. It reminds us that we all need to be saved because it only gets hotter in hell. But I just imagine if you open a window or a door in your house, something will happen. Right now there's these little creatures called flies and mosquitoes. Once you open the window in your house, you don't control what flies into your house. You can't walk around and say things like, I'm an American citizen. Flies cannot come into my house. Flies don't care about your citizenship flies don't care if you're the renter or the owner of the house the moment they see an opening they go in and they don't care who owns it how big the house is how rich the house is and when they go in they know only to do is buzz and just make weird sounds and if it's a mosquito he will attack you or she will attack you at night and drink your blood and you might not see a mosquito you might not believe in a mosquito the only thing is in the morning you will wake up with a red spot and it's gonna start itching you're gonna scratch it it will itch more because there is a mosquito satan is called lord of the flies the way he operates is the same way flies operate it does not matter if you're a christian it does not matter honestly how many verses you read if you open your life to the darkness the darkness will come in that's why paul says do not give place to the devil the word place indicates spot the word, word place indicates an open door the word place indicates that as a christian possessed by god can't be in a possession of a demon if they open their life to the involvement and to the power of demons you may say how can christian get a demon i'm so glad that you asked there's three simple ways in through inheritance through intrusion and through involvement how do you get it through inheritance it's when you get born with a demon it gets passed on from your generation mama did witchcraft especially through witchcraft or daddy maybe was involved in a cult you can get born with that demon how do you get a demon through an inheritance when you were conceived in your mother's womb and you were not wanted or they wanted to abort you and you were born with a spirit of rejection how can you get a demon through inheritance when you were conceived as a boy but parents wanted a girl you will develop confusion for the rest of your life with your gender through that. That's how demons can enter in the womb before you were, you, you were even born. Intrusion. Demons can enter through intrusion. They can enter through intrusion when you were maybe abused, taken advantage of. Meaning there was a weakness 
there, there was some kind of an intrusion into your life and it's not fair but it's still legal ground for demons to enter in or maybe you grew up in a household where parents were divorced and the pressure of that situation caused you to snap and you developed anger and wrath and resentment and those are spirits that took advantage and intruded into your life because of those brokenness in your family or there's another one called involvement it's when you involve yourself with the occult with the Ouija boards when you involve yourself with the dark with the with the darkness with the white magic black magic when you involve yourself maybe commit abortion or you involve yourself with all kinds of demonic objects you can get a demon through involvement you open the door or you open a window you open the the window of your eyes you open the window of your ears you open the door of your mouth and those things can fly into your life but my friend no matter how many ways demons can get in there's only one way to get them out and that way is Jesus Christ and that way is the blood of Jesus that way is not a witch that way is not a fortune teller that way my friend is not some ritual see the witches can take a demon but in reality they replace those demons by placing bigger ones inside so they can take the demon of arthritis but then they'll put the demon of cancer instead of that they can take the demon of nightmares but then they will put the demon of suicide instead of that but when Jesus sets us free he sets us free indeed he doesn't give us anything else except the Holy Ghost he doesn't give us anything else except the spirit of love the spirit of power and the spirit of sound mind if you are glad for Jesus Christ give God some praise this church today Hallelujah. Christians can have demons. The reason why is because demons refer to a person as a house and house has many rooms. There are rooms that you occupy, there are rooms that you live in. You know for those of you who ever had roommates you know one thing is you can have a roommate and still be an owner of your house. And so and for those of you who have an attic or a basement see sometimes demons like to hide in those places that we don't visit a lot like an attic or like a basement but today I believe the Holy Spirit wants to go through every part of our spiritual house and bring a cleansing in our temple take the bad stuff out take the bad stuff out and bring deliverance and bring freedom come on somebody point number two demons can bend an area in believers life but they can't break believers loyalty to God watch this the demon bent her but they couldn't break her she was bent but her loyalty to God wasn't broken because where did Jesus met this woman in the synagogue meaning the demons no matter how much access they have had I want to tell you something they are restricted more than they are restricting you never give devil more credit than he deserves are demons powerful yeah can demons torment? Yeah. Can they harass? Yeah. Can they bring sickness? Yeah. Can they bring intrusive thoughts? 100%. Can they cause sexual dreams? 100%. Can they make you restless in a spiritual environment? 100%. But you must understand also, you also got power. You can't give demons a blame. You can't blame them for why you are not loyal to God. I love the fact the testimony of our friends today that we heard. They were still in church. She brought her demons to church this woman for 18 years brought her demons every Saturday to read the scriptures and those demons though they bent her life they couldn't break her loyalty to God if your loyalty to God is broken don't blame it on the devil don't blame it on the devil you are responsible devil is going to hell because of his sin you will go because of yours nobody will be in hell because of devil's sin we are all gonna be in hell because of our own sins if we're gonna go there and therefore we cannot blame the devil for what we are making decision and God did never gave devil so much power as to take your will and take your free choice my friend you are responsible for your decisions it all starts as a choice a choice becomes a chain a chain becomes a cycle but everything starts with the choice even if you have a chain even if you have a cycle you still make it can make a decision today even if you are bent to say you know what devil you might bend me you can't break me I'm stubborn I know devil you are stubborn oh you have never met a stubborn person I am as stubborn as they come because I am gonna fight you I am going to press into the Lord I am going to pray I am going to fast 
I am going to read the Bible. I am going to come to church on Sunday morning. I am going to get on my knees. I'm going to go to prayer line. I'm going to get delivered. I'm going to get prayed for. I am not going to break. I am not going to break. I might bend, but I'm not going to break. Somebody say, I will not break. Come on, somebody say, I will not break. Say, listen, Satan. You may bend me, but you can't break me. Say, I will rise again. I am destined to walk in freedom, to walk in liberty, and to walk in victory. Come on, somebody. Take your seat. Number three, torture that which torments you. We look at this woman and Jesus describes her grievous situation to the leader of the synagogue by saying, think of this, for 18 years she's been tormented. But I want to show you the other side. Not in any way do I want to draw your sympathy to the devil. But think of this, for 18 years demons have been tormented by her decisions. Yes, the devil has been tormenting her. The fact that she dragged that demon to listen to the Bible every Saturday. She force fed. She dragged that demon to every prayer meeting. I think that demon was ready to go. Sometimes during deliverance when we pray, the demons are saying, I am tormented in this person. The, the, the prayer they pray too much they fast too much and sometimes the demon will say I hate you she makes me watch YouTube videos of your sermons and everything torment that which tortures you you can torture the enemy by not giving in to what he wants to do and say listen if you don't leave I'll drag you to church I'll drag you to a prayer meeting. I'll make you read the Bible. Why? Until I turn up the heat so much, you're going to have to go. You're going to have to be expelled. You're going to be tired and you're going to have to go. Somebody give God some praise right now. Somebody give God some praise right now. Put that devil under notice. Tell that devil his time has expired. His time has come to an end. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. I remember being in a, a week ago I was in this team room and I'm one of those people I just offer apology I please forgive me for what I do and what I'm about they'll tell you what I do when I go to a sauna in a gym I don't want nobody there or a steam room steam room especially I don't want to see another face there I want to have another face again that's why I ask you for forgiveness that's the area the Lord is working on me I remember I entered in and there were these three girls there and uh, very loud and, and all of this stuff and but I have a way of getting people out of a steam room. It's called adding steam. Making it so hot that they scream and get out. And there's one secret to do that. It's called adding water on the sensor. I always come with two bottles of water, always two, because one is not enough. Some people are very strong. <laughs> On the second water, everyone leaves. I've never met one time where somebody stood during the second water. And as I did that, yes, the Lord convicted me. He says, be nicer to other people, ask for their permission. But then when he's finished with that, I got a revelation. See, the problem with many people, why they're not getting delivered is the demons are not tortured enough they're only doing torturing they're not being tortured demons are tormenting you're not torturing how do you torture add steam add fire you must say no but i can't do it well yes you can you can do all things through christ who strengthens you the owner is jesus christ not the demon Listen, you are still in charge. They might temporarily gain a control over a particular area or a mood or, a, or, or something, but you are still in charge. And there is a secret. If you see some things that you don't like, what you need to do is add steam. You need to add some fire to your fireplace. You need to add some water to your sensor, to your spiritual sensor. Add some Bible. Something will begin to happen. They will begin to leave. The Bible says that 
as we grow in God it says that the perfect love casts out fear the word perfect in the original over there says mature love that means as you mature in God's love as you mature in God's word something will begin to happen certain things will begin to be broken off of your life demons will come out and say leave me alone why I can't stand this anymore this is too hard this is too painful I'm being tortured and I'm being tormented don't make it easy on the devil he did not make it easy on you don't make it that easy on the demons don't make it easy don't go easy you gotta throw those punches you gotta add some steam you gotta add some water you gotta fill your life with God you gotta fill your mind with God's Word you gotta fill your mornings with devotions you gotta fill your evenings with sermons somebody give God some praise come on somebody give the devil a black eye give the devil a black eye right now and crank up the steam crank up the heat in your life don't let the devil sit quietly let the devil get burned you know if you turn up the heat a stove and you an accident put your hand you will scream and yell people say why do demons scream because the atmosphere is charged because somebody cranked up the steam because somebody added the fire and that's exactly what we see that happened to this woman is that this this evil spirit of infirmity was removed but she dragged it to church bring your demon to church number four loyalty and listening proceeded being loosed verse 10 of chapter 19 it says and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the sabbath guess who was listening spirit of infirmity guess who was forced to listen what the son of god was teaching before she was loosed she was loyal she was a church she didn't stay at home and say I can't do it it's too hard it's feeling down I can't get out of the bed oh I'm pretty sure the Spirit gave her those thoughts I'm pretty sure the Spirit made her feel like that but she said to that Spirit I might not be able to get rid of you today but you're not stopping my church attendance you're going to church you go to church I can tell you what she was feeling she wanted to go to the bathroom when Jesus was teaching she wanted to pull up the phone she wanted to be distracted because that's exactly many times the evil spirits cause in people who come who have them in church they, they're uncomfortable they're restless they constantly need to move they constantly need to go use the restroom even if they don't need to go they need they can't sit still or they get such a hostility toward anybody who's preaching the gospel and Jesus was speaking and she was listening I want to challenge you a lot of times God will teach you to listen and be loyal before he loosen you why so that when you are loosed you will listen more and be loyal more this is what I've noticed if you don't know how to listen to God be loyal to him in spite of your suffering and God delivers you and you're saying this lie Lord if you deliver me then I'll serve you the reason why I'm not serving you the reason why I can't wake up in the morning the reason why I don't read the Bible but I bench watch on everything on Netflix the reason is because I got a demon sitting on my back the reason why I'm not loyal is because I'm not loose and God says no 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 that's not how this is gonna work I want you to listen and I want you to be loyal and I'm going to loose you can somebody say amen I love this about Jesus the scripture says that Jesus taught her Jesus saw her Jesus called her Jesus delivered her and he laid hands on her Jesus taught her first before he delivered her he talked to her don't expect coming to Jesus right away for Jesus to deliver you allow his word to fill you so many people come for a quick fix God is not a microwave God God wants you to begin to make his word a priority whether you're gonna receive complete deliverance today which I believe for or for some of you this is gonna be another layer peeled off on your way and process of walking in your freedom make God's word a standard in your life give a place for God's word in your life the same way you treat God's word is the same way you treat Jesus because he is the word of the Lord he is the Bible he is his word Jesus taught her first and then the Bible says he saw her 
Allow Jesus to see you. Allow Jesus to notice you. Allow His love to envelop you. Allow His love to blanket you like a soft blanket. Allow Him to see you. And then He called her. He wants to call you. See most of us when we see Jesus we're like, I got a demon. I have work for you. But Jesus doesn't just have work with you. He has a word for you. He wants to see you. He wants to call you and He wants to deliver you. And I believe today He's going to deliver you in Jesus' name. Today I believe God's going to set people free in Jesus' name. Today foreign entities that occupy your space are going to be removed by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. But I believe for this, the Bible says, and He touched her. Not only He wants to deliver us because some of us, we have a demon problem. But even if the demon leaves because the brain chemicals, because other things, the Lord also wants to bring healing in our life. And He will use His Word to heal us. Sometimes He will use medicine to heal us. Sometimes he will use counseling to heal us because deliverance is not the only thing we need the Bible says and he touched her he wants to touch you maybe you were touched in the wrong way maybe you were touched in a way that makes you scared of anybody touching you today the Lord wants to heal you he wants to heal the wounds in your soul he wants to heal the negative words that caused you to live in paranoia and fear and nightmares he wants to undo the damage that the enemy has done he wants to lose you and he wants to touch you come on somebody shout touch me Lord come on somebody shout touch me Lord and number five Deliverance removes the demon, but not your need for discipline. Deliverance removes the demon, but not responsibility. I want you to notice something. I didn't see this before. As I was reading in verse 11 of chapter 13 of Luke, see this. And she was bent over and, can, and could in no way raise herself up. What caught my attention, it does not say that she was bent and in no way could God raise her up meaning she could not raise herself up not God she could not and I want you to see this when she was delivered it says she verse 13 was made straight it did not say God made her straight she made herself God did not make her straight. She did. God removed what hindered her from making herself straight. God wants you to make your life successful. Hear me very clear and loud. Deliverance will not make you successful. Deliverance will remove the hindrance but you still have a job to pull yourself up teach yourself to be full of faith instead of negativity like our brother said that I believe the word that was spoken that you are free and I stand on that word God doesn't do that for you he removes something and then you gotta pull yourself she made herself straight she straightened her back she squared her shoulder deliverance removes the demon it does not remove discipline it does not remove your need to be discipled it does not remove your need to be made straight make good grades to study to wake up early in the morning to watch what you eat to watch what you watch to watch what you listen after that you have a job to do you gotta pull yourself up see some people they constantly go from deliverance to deliverance not realizing that deliverance loses you from bondage it never se separates you from battle afterwards you need to begin to raise yourself up raise yourself up pull yourself up because you have the power now in Jesus name a week ago where I live we have tumbleweeds and tumbleweeds what they do what tumbleweeds what they did is they rolled into our house like this overwhelming tornado so we picked all the tumbleweeds but they left a lot of seeds and a lot of residue I had some intern girls that helped to pull a lot of the weeds from the ground there was a lot of still leaves and residue from those tumbleweeds and I had one way and that is to go and pick up between the rocks all of those little uh, weeds and just like small little straws and all of that stuff and 
and I looked at it I'm like man this is gonna be so exhausting so I found a different way and on Amazon they sell these fire torches you connect it to a um, what do you call that uh, prop a propane tank and so I bought it and I was like man I was excited for it I was looking forward to Saturday I'm like I love me burning stuff I love set things on fire whether it's in church or at home and so I got so excited I got this thing I finally got it to work a fire this long you standing it's like deliverance burns everything I mean it was burning everything my my yard where the rocks are are clean it's like somebody nitpicked everything it just cleaned everything so then I got to the back lawn and we have some plants there and so I asked my wife to come and help me so that my fire doesn't ex overextend and uh, overextending it did and so on accident I was coming close to this plant that was so dry and um, it caught on fire and the plant burned and it burned so fast it was gone and I realized as I was doing that that in fire burns the bad but water nurtures the good and the problem happens is if all you have is fire you will scorch your life you will not nurture your life people who see deliverance as a solution to all of their problems will remove demons but they'll never be successful because to be successful you have to learn to have a hose and a fire torch you have to plant the seeds water the plants and burn the weeds my friend when God destroys the weeds God doesn't remove the responsibility to plant the seeds water the plants and raise yourself up when you lose a demon you don't lose your flesh you don't lose your need to be disciplined you don't you you don't lose your need to go to college you don't lose your need to watch your tongue you don't lose your need to begin to bridle your mouth you don't lose your need to have a some kind of a software limit on your phone so you don't watch things that you should not watch God removes things so that you can pull yourself up if you don't want to do that and you just wait God to stretch you and pull you I'm gonna tell you one thing you will be delivered and disappointed delivered and defeated and you will look for another deliverance no matter how many deliverances you get you will need to learn go from sleeping in every day depressed after you get delivered you're gonna have to set your alarm to wake up a little bit earlier Jesus won't do that for you you're gonna have to learn to open up your Bible and read the Bible. Jesus will not open the Bible for you. She raised herself up. Throw the pacifier out and pick up a sword. Retire from the nursery and join the army. Jesus wants you to raise yourself up. Come on, touch your neighbor say raise yourself up. Touch your other neighbor say pick yourself up. Touch your other neighbor say get disciplined. Touch your other neighbor say fight back. Come on, touch your other neighbor and say stand strong. Touch your other neighbor and say resist the devil and he will flee from you in Jesus name. I want you to rise to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. We praise you Father. We praise you Holy Ghost. We exalt you God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you Lord every head bowed and every eye closed if you're in this room and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ I want to invite you first and foremost before we do a mass prayer to give your life to Jesus whether you're sitting in the overflow you're watching us on YouTube or on Zoom if you don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior or if you walked away from Jesus and it's been a while and you, you don't have a relationship with the Lord but the Lord is calling you back when I count to three I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand so we can pray for you for Jesus to come into your heart the greatest decision is not deliverance the greatest decision is the salvation of your soul the greatest need that you have is for Jesus to be in your heart as your Lord and as your Savior every head bowed and every eye closed if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today is your day he wants to save you right now he wants to forgive you of your sin he wants to accept you into his family one two 
three just raise that hand high if you need to get saved only if you if you're saying I walked away from the Lord I need to come back to Jesus today I need to get saved raise your hand high in the overflow I want to see your hand those of you I see your hand thank you um, those of you on YouTube you can just say I need to get saved thank you I see hands all over this room for those of you who raised your hand or you wanted to to give your life to Jesus and I count of three I'm gonna ask you to quickly come out of your seat and come to the front one two three quickly quickly come out of your seat right now even in the overflow quickly come out of your seat and come to the front we're gonna pray for you we're gonna pray that Jesus will come into your heart quickly thank you thank you thank you I see people coming out I see people coming just come just come just come that person in the overflow or anybody else just come just come just come if you need to get saved if you're not right with the Lord just come if you brought a friend with you who does not know who does not know the Lord bring them with you right now we want to pray that Jesus will become the Lord of their life more people are coming I'm just gonna wait for a few more seconds begin to make church let's give them a clap offering one more time clap uh, a round of applause thank you Lord for responding to the call of God responding to the to the call of the Holy Spirit thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for those of you in the front and some who are still coming let's begin to pray that Jesus will come into our heart say this out loud with me say Lord Jesus I am a sinner please forgive me of all my sin of all my sin and wash me and wash me with your precious blood with your precious blood I surrender I surrender my whole life to you my whole life to you and from this day forward and from this day forward my life is yours my life is yours I believe I believe you are the son of God you are the son of God who died on the cross who died on the cross for all my sin for all my sin come into my heart come into my heart and live in me and live in me deliver me deliver me from all darkness from all dark all chains all chains all curses all curses and fill me and fill me with the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit right now right now in Jesus name in Jesus name amen amen amen